Philippines, Mr. Uh, Rodrigo Ro Duterte. President Putin, the heads of states, the Valdai Discussion Club, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. For over two decades after the end of the Cold War, Philippine foreign policy hardly evolved. Russia, for instance, remained on the margins of our diplomacy. I view this as an oversight of strategic proportion, a result of bureaucratic inertia, a symptom of blind attachment to bygone views, and assumptions, and a massive failure to grasp change and seize new opportunities. The Filipino nation, of course, deserved better. Thus, when I assumed the presidency in 2016, I vowed to correct this. In 2017, I visited Russia for the first time. Although it was cut short, I believe it led to a meaningful and historic developments in our relations. When I say it was cut short, I had to go home because the Marawi, a city in Mindanao in the Philippines, was a brewing, evolving into an endless violence. We intend to stay in this path and that is why I'm very glad to be here for the second time. I thank President Putin for the opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to a robust and comprehensive Philippine-Russia partnership. I am also grateful to the Vidal Discussion Club for this honor to speak before you on a topic of great importance to us, that of an order and change in world politics. I'm talking about fairness and equality and a stable global order. The liberal global order built after the Second World War was the Pax Americana appears to be under challenge as the 21st century unfolds. The legitimacy of this order is increasingly questioned. Its appeal weakened and its hold over countries diminished. I see two key factors that could be explain this situation. First is the combination of exceptionalism and double standards that we have seen and time again and again from the beginning of the very vanguards of this current order. The great Russian novelist Lev Tolstoy wrote, all happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy. In its own way, this is the same line for nations. Developing countries like the Philippines with their own histories face different challenges and inner problems that would require different sets of solutions. Yet some call the friends, so-called friends, act like they know the answers to our problems and impervious to our specific socio-economic 
and political conditions. They create rules and norms for almost everyone, and some refuse to be bound by the same. Think of the UNCLOS, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and even the Convention of the Rights of the Child. They weaponize human rights, oblivious to its damaging consequences to the very people they seek to protect. Just look at the chaos and stability that ensued in Libya and Iraq following military interventions. Closer home, some of our partners have heard unfair criticism against my government about perceived excesses in our fight against drugs. They see what they want to see to justify their preconceived notions and are trying to understand that what truly is happening is there in my country. This is how friends treat each other. We have not seen them backtrack from defense contracts over baseless apprehensions that we would use arms to violate human rights. Yet you see the same countries supplying high-end weaponry to parties whose actual human rights records leave so much to be desired. But we only seek to protect our republic and those who wish to tear it apart. We only seek to curb criminality that corrodes the very structure of government. We only seek to build a credible defense against those who might be tempted to violate our territorial integrity. Is this not something that all nations are entitled to? In this, is this not what democratically elected governments are mandated to do? By their acts, they weaken my government's ability to protect law-abiding citizens from the outlaws. They limit our capacity to stop the vicious cycle of internal conflict and underdevelopment. And they clip our wings, making it more difficult for us to effect, to effect meaningful change for our people. Now, let me ask you this. In what universe is this right justifiable or fair? Nowhere in the self-contained bubbles of some societies that had the luxury of developing first. We are tired of the misguided and self-serving crusades of the few. It is time that they are challenged. Let me be, be, be very clear. I am not against the United States and or the West. The U.S. is a close friend of the Philippines. In fact, our only treaty ally. We have deep ties with the American people, forged by shared history and nourished by common values. America certainly can offer so much, more than the world. Let me stress, I am not against liberalism in politics and in the economy. Liberalism, to my mind, creates the best pathways to a just and fair society. For a thriving democracy like the Philippines, there is simply no other better alternative to a philosophy that puts premium on the freedom and dignity of the individual. Our issue is not the current global order, but rather the actions of certain actors that violate 
the very principles that underpin this order. The Philippines does not ask for a special treatment, nor favors from its partners. It does not, it does not seek exemption from the norms and principles that have kept the peace in our old world for decades. What we seek, I assume, what the Russian people and all nations also desire is fairness, equality, and mutual respect. We want a strengthened rules-based order where countries, big or small, are treated the same. We want unimpeded freedom and guaranteed by our Constitution to exercise our right to govern ourselves as a people and as we saw it fit. And we want friends and partners to respect our independence to make sovereign decisions just as we respect theirs. The principles of respect of state sovereignty, non-intervention, the peaceful resolution of disputes must be upheld at all times. Otherwise, the order unravels. This is crucial, especially now, with the rise of new powers and the relative decline of the old. The geopolitics shift is the second challenge of the current global order. In the remaining three years of my term, we likewise expand the horizon of Philippine diplomacy by deepening our engagement in Latin America, Africa, and Central Asia. It is also high time that the Philippines book and look at the Middle East with fresh eyes going beyond oil and overseas Filipino workers. As one of the fastest growing economies in the world, the Philippines will assume our twin responsibility of sustaining the growth of our people while helping other developing countries in their own to progress. We will strengthen our economic ties with those regions, opening new markets, and with it, the free exchange of ideas, technology, and innovation. For I want the Filipino people to broaden their worldwide view to be enriched by the cultures and intellectual traditions and civilizations of the Americas, Africa, Central Asia, and the Middle East. Indeed, parochialism and isolationism have no place in the world that is getting smaller and smaller by the day. We have to embrace our shared destiny if we are to overcome the existential challenges of our time. But make no mistake, while we recognize independence of nations, we hold firstly sacrosanct our own independence. Openness to cooperation without precondition is the answer to the serious threats we face today, from terrorism to climate change from migration issues to refugee crisis, and from new pandemics to looming shortages of vital resources. These are multi-dimensional problems that cut across issues of national identity, human rights, development, and sovereignty. Clearly, we have no choice. We have to act together to survive and prosper together. So instead of using these issues as tools to maintain the status quo, to make the rich richer and the poor poorer, as some wealthy nations are wont to do, we have to help each other. If we pursue genuine cooperation, we need to choose between sustaining development and protecting environment. 
between promoting diversity and maintaining national identities, or between upholding human rights and preserving local social order. Balancing the seemingly contradictory goal is the fundamental challenge of our times. In this context, our United Nations must step up and reinvigorate global efforts toward creative solutions commensurate to the complexity of our local problems. But it must, but it must do some while upholding the principles and ideals that all nations, not only individuals, hold dear. This is also the opportune time for us in the global south, those who choose to be non-aligned to ensure that we remain relevant, more than making our voices heard on issues that deeply affect, we must act together. Your Majesty, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a stake in a stable global order. In this period of flux, it is important that we expand our notion of ourselves to include others. That we choose the enduring power of persuasion over coercion. That we follow the path of peace in order to achieve our shared and noble aspirations of our people. We only wish peace for all mankind. Thank you.